Welcome back, I'm Tedward and welcome to the 2024 Nissan Altima SL all-wheel drive. Now this may not be the supercar you've been lusting after, but it is a reasonably priced, reliable sedan with all-wheel drive. Now, ooh, it's windy today. This one comes in at $37,000, but it starts at $33,900 after destination at another $1,000. But this is basically the highest trim level you can get without going to the VC Turbo. This has a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder making 182 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque made into a CVT, of course, Nissan standard fare. It's simple. We, we, we get so caught up in all of the crazy technology and people keep saying, I just want an old school car. I don't want all the screens and the wild technology. And while you can get some wild technology in the VC turbo front wheel drive only, but it does have variable compression. That's what the VC is pretty trick stuff but that gets complicated with this you're getting a tried and true na four cylinder no turbo just a normal engine it's a little buzzy a little bit of vibration comes through the cabin but that's all right because this isn't supposed to be your luxury sedan so it's very windy let's get inside first and just show you what it's like to live with because look at the size of this oh my goodness that is a roomy, spacious back seat. I mean, I'm 5'9", 5'10", we'll say 5'9", okay, I'll be honest. And we've had this seat pretty much where I would be, but like, if I was 6'3", I think I would still have room in the back of this vehicle. You've got HVAC controls down here, you've got USB-C and a regular USB, and you have that up front as well. This one has leather seats, and you get some cup holders with your armrest. What a comfortable, cozy, and spacious place to sit in a normal car. Nothing fancy, nothing outrageous, but well appointed. And I'm going to say something that I mean in the most generous possible way. This reminds me of my sister's 1995 Camry. A lot of people look back on their cars when they were teenagers and think, oh man, I miss cars like that. Well, this is cars like that. It's obviously more refined and it's more technologically updated with better handling. But the simplicity and objective of this car is not to just wow you with some crazy luxury features. It's to be a spacious, usable daily driver that's going to be affordable and not kill you with, with, with expenses for maintenance because some hybrid battery died or some crazy system went wacky. Style-wise, the new body style of the Altima, I shouldn't say new, it's been out since 2019, but I think it's really clean. I think it's a nice style. I think it works. And look at this cavernous giant trunk with the fold down 4060 split in the rear. I mean, geez, you don't need more room than this. And if you do, well, it's time to buy an SUV. This little deck spoiler adds a little bit of cost. They've got the blacked out badges. I think that looks really clean and cool. Under the hood. There you go, nothing too fancy. It's an engine. You've got accessibility to things. I think you could work on this vehicle. You could replace a battery without having to like dismantle the whole thing. And that's what you wanna see in a car like this because if you're gonna buy this, you're gonna wanna just put tons of miles on it and you don't wanna spend a lot of money on maintenance. If you're a DIY guy, you're just gonna be doing some oil changes, maybe a gasket in the long, far away future. Gluing us to the road on a 19 inch wheel is a 235 section tire all around. So first we're gonna go on a little commute and then we're gonna take it on some back roads and talk about what it's like to live with. Cause this is a commuter car. This is what you're gonna be using for your day-to-day -day life. So let's get her started. Now, one of the things that I like the most about this car is its simplicity. We have analog, tack, and speedometer. You've got a decent little screen in here. Some might look at these things as detractors. If that's not your thing and you want full glass display and everything, then like, great. But for me, I actually genuinely like the simplicity of the Ultima. I like having a normal tachometer. I would prefer not to have a CVT and that's fine, but um, you know, we can't have everything. Even the shifter. Very simple, old school stuff, no buttons, no wild things. I mean, this is this is what we all talk about in the comments section when we're saying, hey, remember when cars were cars? Well, turns out the Altima is still a car. Mm -hmm. 
this CBT going to work for us. Not my favorite, but it's actually well tuned. I don't have that many gripes with this CBT. I thought I was gonna be really like against it, but so far so good. The blinker. Hear that? It's very sharp. And that blinker sharpness is likely intended to prevent people from leaving their blinker on. Because I think a normal blinker sound, like the typical like relay sound of a blinker, can get lost in the background. And that's why people do leave their blinkers on. But the only gripe I have with this is, yes, it encourages you to turn it off, but it may actually encourage you not to use it. <laughs> and what we don't need is more Ultima drivers not using their blinkers. Now we'll talk about the reputation of Nissan a little later, but first let's just see how it operates and drives. And one of the first things you notice is the steering. The steering, it's easy, it's weighted properly. The only problem with it is it's a little nervous. This isn't a severe problem. I'm not describing this in a way that it's like a deal breaker or anything, but it is something that I noticed that it is very easy to, to be chasing the front of the car a little bit because a small input does make a difference. And I'm somebody who is an incredibly enthusiastic driver, which means I'm very sensitive to throttle inputs, braking inputs, and steering inputs. I know that most people aren't. And maybe the average Ultima driver is not somebody who's really taking their time to make subtle changes to their inputs. Let's hear an acceleration after this. So the CVT giving us some of those sort of fake uh, upshift style things, which it helps the driver kind of understand what's going on. I would have been totally fine if it just sat at red line and dragged me through. I have read a lot about this car because one of the things that I wanted to look at was like, what is the public perception of it? And so many articles and videos referred to it as like slow, impossibly slow. And I just disagree. I, I, I don't think it's fast. I'm not going to go and say it's quick, but there are slower cars. There are definitely cars on the road right now that people are scooping up and buying in droves. The Honda HRV, for example, the Chevy Trax, you know, these are not fast cars. And those cars, I honestly think I'm like, ooh, man, like the way those get off the line freak me out a little bit. It, 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 I'm not saying they're dangerous, but I'm just saying like having a bit of acceleration is good. This Ultima is plenty. I think this is what we should have in terms of speed. And maybe we're just getting spoiled by like actually fast cars that we think like, well, we need like a four or five seconds, zero to 60 time. This is doing it in like seven and a half seconds. That's fine. I just do not see the need for the typical family sedan driver to have a faster vehicle. And maybe that's what contributed to the you know, Ultima reputation, if you will. You know, we we always have, the, when cars get out into the world, a brand can't always control what happens to their reputation. They can't always control how that's gonna look. I don't think that, for example, BMW sought out to have M3 drivers as, you know, the distracted non-blinker weaving through traffic in New York kind of thing. I, I, it just happened, I think. That's just where you're at when a car depreciates that had some style points, some speed and agility and good drivability. It, it may attract a crowd that's going to sort of abuse those things and disrespect the road, disrespect the drive, as you might say. Altimas, I think, you get a V6 Altima and they were quick. They were faster cars. The previous generations of these cars maybe bred some of that. And we saw that in Maximas back in the day even in the late 90s, you know, a Maxima driver was someone you might want to look out for. <laughs> but I actually think that... Having this Ultima not wheel spinning off the line and not sort of encouraging me to be a, 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 a disrespectful driver might improve the Nissan reputation to the masses. It 
and is fairly agile in a corner. I've got to give it credit. There is some feel to this chassis. There's a little bit lost within the seat, let's say. Uh, sorry, the seat, the steering. Um, but I actually do know what's going on with the car, and I feel pretty confident pinning it into a corner. That is certainly not the purpose of the Altima. But it's not unpleasant. Now, out on the highway, this is where I think, you know, a lot of people are going to spend some time in their Altimas. And this is where that nervous steering, I think, can be a little bit problematic just because these small inputs can kind of send the car wobbling a little bit. So I just feel like I have to approach it with a little more attention than I prefer. This is not an exhausting thing, but just over the course, if I was on a really long road trip, that may come into play. I'm, if you had an hour commute each way, I just don't think it's going to be a problem. But I do think that you just need to be a little aware of what's going on. Now we have adaptive cruise control. That's a lovely feature in a car. Now we have that in pretty much everything now. So that's not something that's particularly inventive or modern or whatever. And at this price point definitely needs to be included. The only thing that I think I can ding this car for authentically is there's just some drone from this engine. This four cylinder is definitely a little wobbly. Um, there's some there's some NBH noise, harshness, vibrations from it. And it's a little bit of a symptom of this transmission because if this were a typical, let's say, six-speed or eight-speed automatic with a torque converter, I think we'd be sitting closer to 2,500 or 3,000 RPM at 72 to 75 miles per hour. Because we're in a CVT and it is doing its darndest to keep me in a really low turning environment for fuel economy, of course it's going to have some noise and vibrations because it's essentially lugging itself to get there. So some of that is just almost intentional tuning on the part of, of, of the engineering. Now there is some wind noise. It's not the most quiet cabin, but it's also not something I would expect from a car in this segment to be ultra luxury. To me, the Altima is a back to basics affordable, family-friendly sedan. In the past, we should just get the elephant out of the room at some point during this video about the reputation of the Altima. Somehow, the Altima became like a reckless driver's dream car. <laughs> we, we have Facebook groups dedicated to this big Altima energy. And it's not totally fair, but it's not totally untrue. This body style, I think, does reduce that vibe. I feel like these cars are a lot more aimed at like normal responsible drivers than what we've seen from the previous generation. Let's see how it gets off the line. They must have refined this CVT over the years with this car because I've seen videos of this doing some wacky things from 2019, 2020. It behaves really well and I am not a CVT guy. I usually really dislike them and I would do anything to stay away from them, but this is behaving normally. I'm not confused by it. If I go wide open right here, it's putting me in a reasonable sp a spot for torque pretty quickly. I'm not waiting for anything. And sure, is there delay? Yeah, but this isn't a GT3, it's an Altima. So I'm okay with that. We've got Apple CarPlay as we go over all the filling of the potholes, sorry. <laughs> That's the good stuff. Um, we've got Apple CarPlay. We've got an updated screen from the original launch of this car and it works really well. It's simple. It's not the most stylish or impressive looking thing, but it gets the job done. Now let's pull into this neighborhood too, because I do want to show you one thing that's a little bit lame in this car, and that is the cameras. The cameras are not very impressive. 
Functional, yes. Impressive, no. So let's come over here. We'll use our non-fancy shifter. God, I just really love that this has normal controls. And there you go. This doesn't look that impressive. It gets washed out really quickly. You can see how much of a fisheye view this is. And you can see like the top of the trunk, the bumper. And you do get what is unique in a car of this price range is a top-down view. That's really nice for parking and things of that nature. That's not bad. I'm not complaining about the fact that you get this feature. I am just complaining about like, you put these lovely features in here, but what you don't end up with is a nice camera. Just put a slightly nicer camera into it. You can hit the camera button though, which is so nice to have a physical button really quick that just says camera. I don't have to go through some crazy screen because oftentimes when you need a camera, you need it now. You need it right now. You do not want to be waiting and like fiddling. You're like, dude, I'm taking up space in traffic and I'm just trying to p parallel park in a, in a, in a efficient manner. Sometimes you just want that camera right there, right now. Love that there's a physical button. So the Nissan folks have thought this through. Let's take a look at the turning radius in our all wheel drive vehicle. Sorry, UPS guy. Quite acceptable. In terms of ride comfort, I think having a 19 inch wheel doesn't necessarily benefit you. It's not the, the fanciest tire either. So I think a lot of the road noise that you get from this car is actually just from the tire, not necessarily from like a noisy cabin. So if you put like a, a, a nicer tire on it, I bet it would, it would quiet it down quite a bit. But having a little more sidewall would likely go a long way in making this a more premium feeling cabin with a little more shock absorption just from the impurities of especially these New England roads. The seating position is really good. I like where I am in the cabin. The only thing I don't like is where my knee falls on this lower dash. Um, I do tend to find myself hitting that a little bit. It's a little uncomfortable, which I can't ding it too much because I'm not hitting the steering column like I do in a lot of Volkswagens or in my Lexus GX 460. We're gonna see if we trust this guy's blinker first. We're good. The top end of this four cylinder is really good. It pulls nice and hard to redline. And because you've got that balance between power and torque, it doesn't mean you've got to get all the way to the top of the revs to find um, some juice. But I do just really like the character of this engine, even though this is not the top of the line engine. And I don't know that I recommend going for the top of the line engine. I think it's a lot of money to spend on something that could potentially have a reliability issue. And in terms of value, that's where the Altima is such a power player in this game because you can get into an Altima with front wheel drive and this 2.5 liter for $26,000, $27,000. That's really a, a lot of car for the money. You don't need to get all the fancy trims that this has. You don't necessarily need the leather seats or the heated seats or all this stuff. You can get away with a lot on a base level Altima because some people just need a car. Some people aren't looking for their car to be an enthusiast vehicle or a luxury vehicle. Some people want a car that they can just park anywhere at the grocery store and not worry too much, but still respect what they're driving. This blinker noise kind of reminds me of old Hyundai. It reminds me of like when the Tiburon came out. The brakes. I think this is a well-braked car. They're really intuitive. I know exactly what I'm getting when I go for the pedal. The initial bite isn't throwing me through the windshield, but I'm also not fearful that I'm not gonna get the brakes that I requested. So 
a lot of things in this car are quite intuitive and enjoyable. The Bose sound system in the vehicle is phenomenal. I think it's really good for the price range too. Like it's not the Acura ELS 3D Studio or anything like that, but my goodness, you get great bass. I don't feel like I'm gonna blow out the speakers. I'm really happy with that. And I think that's a clever move on their part. You know, sub $40,000 to have a sound system this good is no joke. Let's go down here. There's automakers that are just begrudgingly manufacturing sedans. They don't want to make sedans. They want to just sell SUVs and SUVs sell. It's kind of a bummer that that's gone. And I think, is this a Saab 97X? Speaking of begrudgingly manufactured cars. Oh my goodness. That's wild. You do not see many of those in the world. And I feel like they're all in Rhode Island. Well, I'm glad this exists. Yes, it's a buzzy kind of old school feeling four cylinder, but I like that. That's reliability. That's to me, that's the sound of reliability. I think that the suspension tuning is pretty premium for, for what we're getting. It, it, it feels sporty enough. Is this a dead end? I actually have never been down here before. I suppose we'll just come down here. But in 2024, while all these manufacturers who are still begrudgingly making sedans are making them complicated, complex, they have crazy drivetrains, they have hybrid drivetrains, they have too many options, or they get expensive because their hybrid drivetrains start to add cost, weight, all of the things, the Altima still here, standing strong as a naturally aspirated, no turbo, no hybrid, just a reliable little engine made it to a CBT, now front and all wheel drive, giving you a car that you can work on, that you can trust, and that isn't a bore to drive. This will not excite you. You're not going to go canyon carving in your Altima unless it's a press car like me and you just want to go and see what it can do. But I think it's really valuable to have cars like this in the market. And for all of those who are going to complain about the Altima, who are like, well, it's not this, it's not that. Let me just remind you, sometimes those are the same people who are saying these things are getting too complicated. They're getting too expensive. I don't want all the screens. Well, look, you got to have at least one screen for your Apple CarPlay and your navigation. This makes sense. I know that not everybody loves a tacked on sort of thing in the dashboard, but it works. Let's take a look at what we do have though. We have a tachometer and a speedometer that are not digital screens. Wonderful. A funky tack, honestly, because there's no one. It just starts at the two. We have a gear selector that isn't a button or some crazy scrolly fancy wheel. It's a, a lever. I love it. I want that. We have a car that doesn't have a turbo or a battery that's driving some crazy hybrid drivetrain that you'll never be able to work on if it goes wrong. And you get a car that gets over 30 miles per gallon. I've put a couple hundred miles on this car. Highway, mixed driving, a bunch of accelerations for you guys. 33 miles per gallon. Like, you know, sure, you can go spend more money on a more complicated car that could get 40 miles per gallon. Is that worth it? Is it worth spending that much more money? That's a pretty good job putting the power down too. Not a hint of wheel spin from this all wheel drive system. Now, maybe that's because it doesn't have all that much torque down low, but uh, it's doing the job. So I'll admit I 100% went into this car thinking like, oh, what am I gonna say that's nice about it? And upon first drive, I wasn't thrilled. I wasn't disappointed, but I wasn't thrilled. The more I drove it, the more I came to like it. And that's a good thing because it's, much better than the inverse where you're like, oh, this is a good car. And then you start to find all the things you dislike about it. I find myself enjoying my drive in this car. Am I looking forward to it? No, I'm not like, oh, I have to get back in my Altima and go for a drive. But I don't get into it and think it's sucking the life out of me like some other sedans in the market. 
So I think that's going to do it for my Nissan Altima review. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't overlook this body style. I know that it's been out since 2019, and I know that other manufacturers have completely revamped their lineup and come out with brand new generations of some cars. But some tried and true old school stuff is sometimes what we need to recalibrate and and not go overboard with complicated technology that could very well be obsolete in the very near future. As far as I know, we're still going to have gas-powered engines and a non-turbo four-cylinder is probably going to run for a very long time. Thanks so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing, cute dog. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.